Welcome to Gianni Game Day Episode 5. And this week, we host the longest, continuous, intersectional rivalry in college football history. You know what I'm talking about. We're talking about Navy versus Notre Dame. This weekend in San Diego, California, the first time Notre Dame has ever played in San Diego, California. The first time ever that Notre Dame and Navy have played west of Chicago. And Gianni Football will be there. So you know it's time to hit him with the theme song. Let's go. Gianni Game Day. Be sure to check out my Instagram page, at Gianni Football, for complete content and complete breakdowns of uh, players and history of Notre Dame versus Navy. This week, I posted videos of my first game watching Notre Dame and my first game watching Navy, so please check that out. This year's matchup between Notre Dame and Navy is put on by the Holiday Bowl. I was at the Holiday Bowl last year, so please check out my Gianni game day episode of the Holiday Bowl on my Gianni Football YouTube page. Because of the 91 year history between these two blue bloods of college football, this whole episode is gonna be a know your history. Starting October 15th, 1927, Navy and Notre Dame have played 91 straight times. Notre Dame leads the series with 75 wins, Navy has 13 wins, and both teams tied just once. Notre Dame technically has 77 wins, but two of those wins were vacated by the NCAA. During World War II, Notre Dame hit its lowest enrollment since the Great Depression, some estimated under 3,000. Notre Dame President Reverend Hugh O'Donnell wrote a letter to the Navy volunteering Notre Dame's campus to be used as a training facility for the Navy. Well, they took him up on his offer and started the V-12 training program, July 1st, 1943. It reported 12,000 naval officers were trained at Notre Dame from 1944 to 1945. Notre Dame was paid $487,711 by the Navy for the use of their services in a time when Notre Dame was struggling financially. Notre Dame's 15th president, Reverend Theodore Hesburgh, said that Notre Dame was on the verge of closing down if it hadn't been for Navy's assistance. After all the help that Navy provided Notre Dame, Reverend Hesburgh vowed to always have a spot for the midshipmen on Notre Dame's football schedule. The ties and respect for Navy go way back for Reverend Hesburgh. Upon taking his vows, he enrolled at Catholic University to earn his doctorate degree. At first, he requested to work as a chaplain on an aircraft but he was denied that opportunity by the university. When Hesburgh graduated, he was ordered to teach at Notre Dame. He worked with naval officers and he actually worked as a chaplain for returning vets. In 2013, the Navy made Reverend Theodore Hesburgh an honorary chaplain. After winning the national championship in 1943, Notre Dame assistant coach Ed Moose Kraus enlisted in the Navy from 1944 to 1945. 14 of the players in that 1943 national championship team for Notre Dame were naval apprentice seamen, including 1947 Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Lujak. Johnny Lujak joined the Navy and the war as a naval officer in 1944 and 1945. He wasn't alone. His head coach Frank Leahy joined during the same time, but as a lieutenant. They both returned for the 1946 season and won another national championship. While in the Navy, it was reported that Frank Leahy recruited George Connor. Connor had experience at offensive line at Holy Cross before enlisting in the Navy. Leahy promised George two things. We will win the national championship and you will be an All-American. In 1946 and 1947, George Connor earned All-American honors and the Irish added two more national championships. Legendary Notre Dame head coach, Eric Parsegian, served three years in the Navy before taking the job at Notre Dame. He would go 11-0 against Navy, and he would start the 43-year win streak that Notre Dame would have over Navy. Edgar Rip Miller played tackle for the legendary Notre Dame backfield, the Four Horsemen, from 1922 to 1924. The offensive line unit was dubbed the Seven Mules. 
He would later become an assistant coach at Navy, and he would help create the series between Notre Dame and Navy in 1927. Rip Miller is the first Navy coach to beat Notre Dame in 1931, 7-0 in Baltimore. He was the head coach of Navy from 1931 to 1933 before resigning and taking an offensive line coaching position until 1947. After coaching, Edgar Rip Miller was the Naval Athletic Director from 1948 to 1974, and he was always an advocate for the series between Notre Dame and Navy. The Rip Miller Trophy is made in honor of a legendary Notre Dame player and Navy coach. It was unveiled to the public February 18, 2011. The trophy was made by a Notre Dame club member in Maryland and members of the Baltimore chapter of the Naval Academy Alumni Association. This rivalry trophy is different in that it is made up of two halves, each side holding their half throughout the year. It is only when these two teams meet in the fall that the two halves come together. Instead of engraving the game results in the trophy, the names of the captains of each squad are engraved in the trophy instead, a sign of mutual respect and an appreciation of the difficulty of being a captain of each of these teams. Junior safety Alohi Gilman played one year for Navy before transferring to Notre Dame last year. In 2016, he started all 12 games for Navy as a true freshman, including a 12-tackle performance in an upset win against the Irish. This will be the first time that he's playing his old team because last year he had to sit out a year because of the NCAA transfer rules. While at Navy, as a true freshman, he was second in the team in tackles with 76 and he earned all AAC honorable mention. This year for Notre Dame, Gilman has 38 tackles, two tackles for loss, and one forced fumble against Vanderbilt that was inches away from becoming a touchdown. Since 2005, each team joins one another during the playing of their alma mater after the game. A sign of mutual respect and sportsmanship. And I'm really excited to see it this weekend. And now it's finally time for predictions. Notre Dame is a 24 point favorite with a 54 and a half over under. That's kind of a lot, but you consider Navy is coming off of a loss to Houston and Notre Dame's coming off of a bye. So you figure that that'll line right up for the Irish. I think they're gonna win 35 to 14 and the Irish are gonna take home a victory on their very, very tough stretch of late October to November games. SDCCU Stadium is gonna be sold out with an estimated 66,000 people in attendance. San Diego is a military and Navy town. It's home to a bunch of military bases and four naval bases, so you know it's gonna be rocking. Here, cheer for Old Notre Dame and anchors away, because now it's time for Gianni Game Day.
halftime update. Notre Dame is dominating 27 to 0. It is the Dexter Williams show. Notre Dame running back. He has three touchdowns. Armstrong from Notre Dame. He has a touchdown. Ian Book passed for 212 yards, I believe. He's lighting it up. And Notre Dame defense, uh, Jerry Tillery is doing awesome. Um, defensive lineman. Former midshipman Alohi Gilman, he's tearing it up left and right tackles. It's a great atmosphere, man. A lot of midshipman fans, a lot of Notre Dame fans. It's just been such a great game, and I'm really excited to be here for Gianni Game Day number five. Notre Dame wins 44-22 and what a fantastic game we had. Uh, Navy was showing a lot of fight in the second half. They pulled within 16 points I believe. It was 30-14 to 14 with five minutes left in the third quarter so they were starting to come back but then Notre Dame they really flexed their muscle. Dexter Williams had a fantastic game. Three touchdowns. Uh, Jafar Armstrong had a very great game for the Irish as well. Ian Book I believe had two passing touchdowns and that Irish defense was stingy. They did give up 22 points so that is kind of a lot especially you know if they're going to be facing you know Northwestern and uh, Syracuse but pretty good from the Irish they're keeping their win streak alive their national championship their playoff hopes alive goodbye from San Diego pretty soon I will post my schedule and you'll know what where I'm going for the rest of the year I have some surprises coming up so please stay tuned for that